Uh, yeah. Uh, Chef, when is the he asked when is my next story in Playboy coming out? It's scheduled for July. And uh, whatever happened to Ernie? Ernie, now he's asking a question about a great moment. Do you want to hear about that great moment? No, it was one. You know, whenever I whenever I read whenever I read army stories, you know, stories like Mailer and and all these people, I I, I think that, that that they really don't. You know, they don't really write about the army. They they write about war. They write about evil and things. They're not really writing about what actually goes on in the army. And and this is a is a true incident which I will always remember as one of the one of the truly surrealistic, fantastic moments in my army career. I'm in a signal corps, see. You got that? Already there's two strikes against me. How many of you know the signal corps song? Everybody knows the Air Corps song, you know. <laughs> you know, off we go into the wild blue yonder. All the guys in the signal corps had a fantastic set of obscene lyrics to that. <laughs> and we would walk past these fighter planes, you know, and, and these fighter pilots would look at it, you know. I'll never forget one day, one day we are out, a bunch of signal corps guys were out in the boondocks, right in the middle of the, right in the middle of the Florida Everglades, there's palmettas and swamp and crud all over us, you know. And we've been out on maneuvers for about four weeks and we're covered with heat rash and bugs and we've got, we've got the stubble and sunburn and we're, we're putting up this damn wire all across the state of Florida through the swamps. And about every ten minutes this squadron of planes would go, Ooh. they're heading for Jacksonville and the chicks, see. <laughs> up there in the clean blue. And here we are down there. And one day, a group of fighter planes went over, P-51s, and they see us, see, and they're doing a little maneuvering around us, and the lieutenant says, all right, all right, you guys, line up, let's go, it's kind of a twos. We all stand there with our pliers and junk, sweating. Now what? He says, all right, you guys, we're going to do a little fancy drill march in here. Uh, Gasser, you go over there and stand over there. Uh, Edwards, you stand over there. You, uh, Fred, you make the, uh, you make the you. Get on the side. And... <laughs> and uh, it was the first creative marching I've ever seen. I've often wondered where the University of Michigan band is going to do it, you know? <laughs> In color, coast to coast. <laughs> You'll have to explain that to her when you get back to T-neck. <laughs> And, and, and so, you know, it's that kind of scene. And we are now in a troop train. Any guy who's ever been in a troop train, they are not like what you think. I mean, guys don't sit around and sing the ballad of Roger Young, you know. <laughs> and there, I, 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 all the years I was in the Army, I never once saw Van Johnson. <laughs> not once. And, and, you know, I never once saw Errol Flynn or any of those guys I see in the movies. There were all a whole bunch of guys standing around with me with thick glasses, you know, walking around, little lieutenants that were mad that used to be coat and suit salesmen from Bronx and Queens. And they're all standing. And so we're on our way. We're in a troop train. We have no idea where we're going. Absolutely no. It's a sealed troop train. What a feeling that is. And they, I remember we're all lined up outside. Oh, boy, that's scary. You know, they have this train. It's on the side. And we are taking off from this camp. It's, it's Fort Sheridan, Illinois. And this is it. We're all standing there with our tin hats. We've got 6,000 pounds of equipment. The rifles are sticking up. we got the morphine. You know, they have a little morphine. Oh, they got the... Gee... <laughs> I've got all this in the trench knives. Have you ever held a trench knife? What a scary thing that is when they gave me a trench knife. You know? And the tent pegs, we're all standing there with 100 pounds of equipment. We're waiting in front of the train. And this lieutenant's walking around. He's all right, when I start calling out the names, call them a to the right, into the train and on the double. Let's move out. All right, right face. Here we go, Adams. Murphy, he starts reading down the line. Right, right, and the guys, hip, 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 in we go. And now we're in the train. Oh, my God, this is it. Holy God, we're in the train now. Boy, that's a new feeling, see? And boom, they lock the doors. We sit there. 
We hang our equipment up on the rack. We're sitting down in our bunk and everybody's sweating. I was a little scared. A couple of guys said, well, I <laughs> hear a rumor they're just going to send us to Florida down there. <laughs> Somebody says, yeah, uh, Florida, Norway. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Somebody says, yeah, yeah, well, you know, rumors are out. And then the train starts to roll. Ba-dum, 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 and on and on we go. And we're sitting there in the dark and it's getting hotter. And we are out about two hours when this lieutenant comes down the down the row there. He says, all right. So I want three guys for KP. Shepard, Gasser, Ernie. Let's go. All you three guys. KP <laughs> on the troop train. Christ's sake, there's 12,000 guys, you know. Now, you never see this in the movies. Have you ever wondered how they eat on a troop train? Well, let me tell you, it's obscene. <laughs> Yeah, they have one car, see, and this car is totally empty, and it's got these big racks, and in these racks are set these garbage cans. And that's where the food is, see. (laughs) I'm serious, it's all there, and they've got these long stoves, and these guys are cooking up, and the KPs come back, and it is hotter than hell. Good God, is it hot in this train. And you are on 24 lousy hours. 20 faces, you're not going anywhere anyway, you know, what the hell, might as well be back here instead of playing pinochle. So me and, and Gasser and Edwards are back there. And all day long, we're, you know, and the whole train files past you, you see. They just go in a great endless circle. And by the time the last guy's through, the first guy's back again. See, it is dinner now, see. <laughs> they just keep going round and round. You just keep putting the powdered eggs in there, you know. You get real good at that, you know, bing, you know. <laughs> no, you do. You, do. you have to while away the time. You flip them sideways, you know. And say, Watch this wrist action, Gasser, like that. <laughs> Then you hit guys from the rear, you know, once in a while. Say, hey, watch it, here it comes. <laughs> and they're just going on. Through. Yeah, it's all the army, and it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter, and we're going on and on, and this train is going about 70 miles an hour, and the door is open, and you can see the, the scenery going by. Little towns. You see billboards. You see taverns. You see lights. And we're serving all night long, working away, cleaning the pots and pans. And now it is the next day. And it is really hot. And we're way the hell out somewhere. And we've got nothing on but our shorts. They never show this in the army. The Batman. (laughs) Be careful, son. This is a pro at work. They never show... (laughs) They never show this. It, no, they, you never see scenes in the, the oh, where the army really is. Half of the time, guys spend either sleeping or walking around with just their shoes on. <laughs> yeah, you know, laying around and shaving and, you know, just futzing around. That's <laughs> what the army's about. You're looking around. And so we're in there. Here, the, here the three of us are. We've got nothing but our GI shorts on. And these are just, you know, shorts. Our GI shorts. And our GI shoes, that's it, and our dog tags. Because we are sweating up a storm. We're really sweating. Our crew cut, you know, they cut it right down to the bone. And we're working 24 hours, and all of a sudden we're done. And the mess sergeant says, all right, you guys, you're all through. The next three guys are coming in. You guys can take it easy now. Fine job. And you know that great feeling? when you have really done a rotten job. (laughs) And you really did it, you know? You really did it. You fed all these klutzes. They're all mine, my boys, you know? (laughs) They're all burping and everything. I did it, you know? (laughs) You know, it's it's a kind of a feeling, you know, like you're you're big daddy or something. So we're all through, and we're sitting now, the three of us are, are cooling off, and we're sitting on the edge of the platform of the train with our feet hanging over. Right in the door. The door is open, see. And it's getting twilight. It's beautiful. And we are way the hell out in Arkansas now. And you could see the Ozarks way off in the distance. They're purple. And it was one of those raised, elevated tracks. You know, with the gravel that goes down, you're about 30 feet high, and the train is going along. And you can see the track winding off into the distance, and the sun is hanging there, and it's hot, and you can smell the magnolias and the junk in the river. Oh, yeah, you know, it's a great feeling. You know, we're just sitting on the edge and just looking out. The wind is blowing. Me and Gasser and Ernie, we really done it. Our dog tags are hanging. And then the train starts to slow down. You just feel it perceptibly. And we look out, 
And we can see there's this water tower coming ahead. See, we're going to take our water. So the train goes, choom, 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 choom. Yeah, it sits there. We're looking out, see. Ding, 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 ding. You know that sound? Dong, dong. And there's nothing except a road down below us. Way down on the bottom of this embankment is a road. A little country road in this little town. Just sort of spread out. And over here to our left and directly below us is one of these little shacks that you see on the road, you know, that says, eat. <laughs> Americans believe in getting to the right down off the way, you know, <laughs> eat. Can you imagine if Esso put over their sides, you know, uh, <laughs> 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 it'll come to that. This is a new world, you know, <laughs> it'll be in Gothic letters, though. It's all right. <laughs> it says, eat, you know. And we see all these signs, you know, those tin signs tacked all over the outside of a red man's snuff. And, and you see it says hamburgers, and you can see a big sign there says Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, Dr. Pepper, and all that. And we see about four redneck guys standing in there. And you just see that little light. It was a kind of an orange light, see. And there's four redneck guys standing. One guy behind a counter, and the other three are standing with their overalls. And they're kind of looking up at the train. And all three of them got cans of beer. They're drinking a beer. See, it's a little beer joint. And so I'm sitting there, I'm looking down. I see that beer, see. We've been working 24 hours, you know, on nothing but that army coffee and jello and front like that. So I'm looking, oh, it's hot. And I say to Gasser, Gasser, how about a beer? And Gasser says, geez, I don't have any dough. I'm broke. Damn it, I left it back in a car. Well, I had this money belt around my waist, see. I had my three dollars and a half in there <laughs> that I saved for my last six months' pay. It was my life savings, see. And so I says, okay, wait a minute, listen. All right, I'll pop. I'll pop if one of you guys will go. And here's old Ernie looking down. His tongue is hanging out. <laughs> uh, you know. So I says, okay, and I take out the quarter and I flip it. All right, Ernie, you go, man. And I give him the buck, see. And I says, go, man. And down he goes. Clung, clung. <laughs> He's running. His dog tags are flying and his GI shorts are wide open, you know. <laughs> he runs down. And he gets down on the street scene. We're watching him down there, see. He's down there. And we see this little, this little palaver going on. The guy behind the counter says, okay, buddy. Uh, you know, all right, I'll get you beer. And he turns around and they're talking and futzing around. And he's, where well, you guys go? And all of a sudden, the train starts to move. <laughs> Very slowly. It's going, boom. You know how it goes, chum, 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 chum. Oh, my God, Ernie. Hey, Ernie! And he looks up. I see him look up. He's got the three cans of beer. Chum, chum, chum. And the train starts to roll. And Ernie comes tearing out of that place. His dog tags flying. And he starts running up the embankment. He's running. And the stones are flying, and the train is moving faster and faster, and Ernie is running faster and faster at an angle. They keep sliding down. Goes, Ernie, my God, Ernie, Ernie, the gas is Ernie, we're hanging. And it kept, and all of a sudden we knew he ain't going to make it. <laughs> that terrible feeling, he's getting further and further away. And he's drifting, and it's getting dark out. You see the Ozarks out there, and the little town, and now, now he, is, he is down there on the road running behind us. Our train is on its way to God knows where. And Gasser and me are sitting there looking. And all we can hear is tink, 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 his dog tags. <laughs> it's Ernie. And we disappeared into, the, into that purple horizon and never saw Ernie again. <laughs> Ernie with three cans of beer. <laughs> with his dog tags, no money and nothing but a pair of shoes on. <laughs> Lost in Arkansas. My God. And we were scared out of our skull. Me and Gasser, you know, we go back. We're, we're through, so we go back and, and we try to sneak. I says, I says, Gasser, we better tell Lieutenant Cherry. He says, oh, my God, are you out of your mind? Christ's sake. Shut up. Don't volunteer for nothing. I said, I don't know what, what, what it costs if you lose a GI. How many of you ever signed statement of charges? You bust a cup, it's eight cents, you know. Lose a GI, Wow. And we, we go back and we sit down and Lieutenant Cherry comes back and he says, he says, you guys won't have to be on KP now for another month. He said, when we get, he says, hey, where's, where's Ernie? <laughs> he's, he's back. He said, wait, he go to John? Where, where is he? I cannot tell a lie, Lieutenant Cherry. 
We lost Ernie. <laughs> it was our first casualty. He says, you lost Ernie? What do you mean you lost Ernie? He says, well, he says, it's his beer. He went out to get a beer and the train stopped. And we says, he's back in Arkansas. He says, for Christ's sake, don't say a word. <laughs> And Ernie was never again mentioned at our company. And Ernie became, like George Orwell says, an unperson. And you know, I once in a while at three o'clock in the morning, to this day, I wake up. You know, when you've been dreaming, you're sort of half asleep. I look up at the ceiling and I can hear ding, 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 ding. And I see Ernie and I, can, I, I could just imagine Ernie somewhere right now, this minute, out in the darkness in the woods in Arkansas. He doesn't know the war is over yet. Because you know what happens when you get caught in nothing but your shorts. If you think it's bad getting caught with your tie off in a town with the MPs. And I keep thinking, Ernie, wherever Ernie is, I'd like to get in touch. You know, I, I keep reading stories of these Japs, you know, they find on these islands out in the Pacific. You know, 25 years later, they still got their little bazooka. One shell. If MacArthur comes here, I'll get him. You know? And Ernie out there is waiting for Hitler. <laughs> so that's the story of Ernie, one of the great tragedies of my army career.